Nicole Johnson. Yay, me. Denora <laughs> Dr. D. Nieves. We have had so many conversations about this knowledge commerce industry, right? Because me, as a behavioral scientist, I just think I know what I know, and sometimes it's helpful, right? Of course, of course, you know all the things. <laughs> Knowledge, commerce, talks. Right. I never, I never thought of myself as a brand. I never thought of my expertise as a product, right? That's just not how I have been conditioned to think about it. It's very far from the way I was trained and, and my sort of orientation to the world. So I want to talk to you specifically about knowledge commerce because that's the term you introduced me to, right? Yeah. So first of all, tell me, what is knowledge commerce? That's a, Those are big words. Yeah, knowledge commerce, I think that if you sat down and thought about it, you could come up with an answer. But a lot of things that you think about, you can come up with an answer, but it may not actually be it. So it's one of those kind of long terms that is used to describe putting whatever's in your head into a product or a service that you can now monetize, mm. right? Just monetizing your mind, monetizing what's between your ears, your intellectual property. That's another long term for basically capitalizing off of what it is that you know. And it's one of those things that anybody no matter what industry, whether it's product-based, service-based, anybody can capitalize off of because we are so uniquely developed and we have such a unique fingerprint of experiences throughout our lives that we can technically be the expert in whatever it is that we know best. So knowledge commerce is basically how do you generate revenue off of your expertise or your intellectual property? I love that, especially in this age where we're living in social media constantly yes. and in, in all forms of media that continue to evolve. Having an outlet for our expertise is so important. So I know you have been really helpful with me, with my online course, and you worked with Iyamla on her courses, and yes. you um, did a, a million other um, things for other people. Tell me a little bit about how you sort of got started in the knowledge commerce industry and what you find inspirational about pursuing it as a business opportunity. You know, part of me really gravitating to the knowledge commerce industry is being a lifelong learner myself. Mm. My background and my education is a far cry from what I do today in terms of marketing and design. So engineering and uh, operations is very different than design and marketing. But I got into it by being a lifelong learner, by what used to be called lynda.com, which is now called LinkedIn Learning. They acquired them. I used to watch those videos and tutorial videos on how to build websites, how to do graphic design, what are the design principles, because I was always an artist. So I was able to link those courses to my passion of art and creativity and things like that. So being a lifelong learner got me into saying, okay, whatever it is I want to do, I can learn to do it by someone in learning from other people, someone teaching me that expertise. Then once I started my business, I was encountering a lot of entrepreneurs who had a great idea, had great products, had great services that they wanted to you know, get out to the masses. And they struggled. They struggled to create content, to create you know, information, to help people understand what it is that they did and why they were experts in their field, because people do business with people they know, like, and trust. You have to build credibility with them. Mm -hmm. And what I notice is while we're trying to market their business, I'm seeing like the seeds of like genius in their product or services that they could just monetize that. They could just tell mm -hmm. people how to do this thing. And they didn't necessarily connect those dots I didn't say, I can't say that I always have connected those dots as well, but I always could see, man, you could just package that and sell it. That knowledge, that information that you have, 
you can package that and sell it. So that's what started me to, as I engaged with different clients, looking at them as I have not encountered a business or a business model that could not benefit from some form of knowledge commerce. Because so let's talk about what that is, because unknowingly, I've created a whole suite of knowledge commerce products that I was completely unaware of, right? Yeah, you so, got a whole empire. <laughs> right, right. So so talk to me a little bit about what knowledge, what, what are examples of knowledge commerce products, right? Like, what are we talking about tangibly when we talk about knowledge products? Yeah, break it down real simple. An online course, an ebook, a podcast, an app, a membership group. If you're a consultant, a membership group. There are a whole multitude of others, but when you talk about capitalizing off of your knowledge, any sort of consultant or coach, anybody who actually makes money off of delivering their knowledge is in the knowledge commerce market. Interesting. Yeah, it's very simple. Do you feel like the demand for that is growing or like as we move in through this digital age, like we were discussing, do you feel like it's getting bigger or is it narrowing out? Or what do you think the space for knowledge commerce looks like in this market? I believe that it's really growing. And there's a few reasons why I believe that it's really growing. And that's because the technology to deliver knowledge commerce products has expanded considerably. 10 years ago, I did not know there was a job called influencer, right? That is a knowledge commerce space. I did not know that there was a job called content creator, right? Mm. That is a knowledge commerce space. Mm -hmm. And now those are things that people don't look at those careers or those, you know, service providers as anomalies anymore. That is a mm -hmm. widely accepted form of employment being a content creator, that is literally on people's resume, being an influencer, that is literally on people's resume. So the opportunities to develop and become a revenue generating business through just being yourself and presenting your information has definitely grown in terms of opportunity. It has definitely been established as a credible form of, of work and it has actually impacted the overall economy because there was a while there that a lot of people after the pandemic did not return to the workforce. <laughs> you know, there was this grand retirement. And so I think that there's a lot of opportunity there. In addition to that, even though the concept of AI can be seen as a threat to some industries, I think it becomes a big boost to the knowledge commerce in industry because it allows people to help them to develop their content, frame out their intellectual property, frame out kind of their brand aesthetics in a more digestible way than having to hire a copywriter or hire a graphic designer and things like that. Now, being a graphic designer myself, <laughs> I know that's dangerous for me to say that. However, I think that it is helpful to kind of lower the barrier to entry for a lot of people when it comes to developing their knowledge commerce services. So tell me a little bit about who is winning in this game, right? Like who is succeeding in the knowledge commerce space? What, who are the, the sort of people that you can call out as success stories? So there's a bunch of success stories. I would also say even when I look at, say, Taraji P. Henson, when she was talking about the disparity in pay in the actor and actor actress realm, even after they gain all these accolades, she said, well, that's why I have my own hair care brand. That's why I have my own online courses. That's why I have my own. So for people where the door is shut for us, and when I say us, I mean our culture, people of color, things like that. And we're not necessarily getting the recognition on the majority platforms. We bring our own table. You know, when we're not being brought to the table, we bring our own table. And Knowledge Commerce has been a place where people can bring their own table. And based on that, they can be successful. And I would say in terms of like an industry, I can't really think of any particular industry 
that would not benefit from generating passive income for the most part through knowledge commerce. I think that if you have a passion for what you do and enough experience and expertise in what you do and what you feel confident in, you can be supremely successful. And I'll even say, take you as a, a case. You are a professor, you have been on television, things like that, but you've got an expertise and have had a lot of experience and encounters with people who are really achievement focused and achievement minded and are not happy. And who's to say that that is not a product? I mean, you have a passion around making sure that people are, you know, settled in their thinking and can enjoy the space and time that they're in. And that is something that's wildly important for a lot of people that can benefit from that. So I think that you would be a great case study because of your passion around the subject. If you have, if it's nails, if it's hair, if it's, you know, vending machines, if you have a passion around that, you can be wildly successful in the knowledge commerce market because you can help other people, inspire them to have that passion as well. So let's talk a little bit about passion because, you know, the temptation is to say, oh, I can do an online course about anything, right? Or I can, I, I can do a podcast about anything, right? Or if this is making money, then you're right. Yeah. But how important is it for you to be passionate about what you're monetizing? It is, I think it's critical. I don't mm -hmm. think it's just important. I think it's critical to be passionate about what you're monetizing. So all too often, people have bright ideas. And they develop these bright ideas by looking at other people like, what are they doing over there? What's that shiny object? How are they doing this here? And it was like, well, I can do that. But that's not really in the heart. The thing about social media, it's a double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. Because not only does your message get to a lot more people a lot faster than conventional and traditional methods, your energy gets there too. So you get to a place where, you know, people are like, what's the vibe? <laughs> you know, if your vibe right. ain't it... <laughs> People can see through your lack of passion and you're just doing this to clout chase or to, mm -hmm. you know, uh, ride a wave and it can backfire on you really quickly. So it is very important to do it because you really are passionate about it. The other reason why it's important to be passionate about it is because you can spin off. Like I'm passionate about creation developing brands, creating something that serves people, creating marketing strategies, things like that to get it out to people. Because I'm passionate about that core thing, I can spin off. I know and have enough wherewithal to spin off other permutations of that passion. Mm -hmm. I can spin it off to, okay, tech, just the tech side. Can I develop a system or a product or or a service around just helping people build out their tech space. I can spin it off into offering knowledge commerce development services. I can spin it off into creating your brand and creating your website and creating, you know, your online platform. I can spin it off in a multitude of different ways because I'm passionate. I know all the corners of what I'm doing so that I can serve a multitude of, of different audiences and if you're not passionate about it, you probably don't have the requisite knowledge to make those pivots and determine where, you, you know, you can spin off and address other concerns of your market. Can you tell me a little bit about the misconceptions and challenges that people are facing when they come into the knowledge commerce industry? Because it's not the easiest thing to navigate. Right. Yeah. Um, it sounds like, oh, well, if I know something, then I can sell what I know. But that's not it's not quite that easy. Right. So no. talk to me a little bit about what those challenges are and how do you overcome those challenges? So there are several challenges in entering the knowledge commerce market. So I don't want to make it out to be more than what it really is. One of the main challenges is the concept of if you build it, they will come. That is not true. <laughs> you have to build it, 
develop a proof of concept, see if anybody will buy it, market it, get reach, do all this work in order for someone to come, right? And people underestimate the amount of effort it takes to market their actual business. So part of overcoming that if you build it, they will come myth is understanding your target audience, like really understand who it is you are marketing to, understand your ideal client, and then develop some of the content, posts, promo, things like that to help that target audience understand that this knowledge commerce product is for them. So marketing strategy is definitely a challenge to overcome. Another challenge to overcome is you can get really discouraged when you think that someone else is doing your niche. Like you feel like niche marketing is where you need to go and you see someone else in that space and you think, oh, well, might as well throw my, they're already doing it. You're not inventing knowledge. You know, you might have a great idea on how to make spoons and your spoons may be very well sought after but you didn't invent the spoon. There's a bunch of spoon makers <laughs> out there, but you may have a unique take on why your spoon is different, why your spoon is best, right. or makes it a bit, bit right. of, I don't know. Um, I, I use the spoon mentality because I saw this um, HGTV show where this woman was designing a dining room and she interviewed this one posh lady who did the dinnerware and she looked very rich but she put spoons and forks and stuff down on the table. And I was like, this woman looks rich and she designs spoons. She did not invent the spoon. She designs spoons and forks. And she is getting, she's on TV talking about <laughs> this dinnerware. So, you know, and they didn't look like spoons that you've never seen before. They look like spoons that you would pick up and put soup in your mouth with. So anyway, um, but that should not discourage you from starting your own dinnerware line. That should not discourage you from starting your own course around how to be happier when you're a high achiever. That should not discourage you around marketing yourself as the go-to person if you want to bring your online course to market to go to, like me. That's that's what I'm doing. So it's it can be a challenge to understand that just because other people are in your space, that doesn't mean that you can't be there too. A community building is a third aspect of knowledge commerce that can be a really big challenge to overcome because oftentimes you do need to bring a lot of people on board to market your product or services too. And a lot of most people who are just starting out are virtually unknown. So when you're really trying to build a community, you have to focus on engaging people in that community. That may be even include like face-to-face -face networking, but it primarily does include like building your email list, finding ways to offer value to people in a way that you can uh, correspondingly get their email and communicate with them and engage with them on an ongoing basis. Social media goes down. Social media, based on certain bills that are going on in the House today and in the Senate, may go away. What you own is your list. You own your email list. And so the more people you get on that list that you can engage and continue to have conversations and build community with, then that's where you can develop that community to continue to listen to you and hear about the expertise that you have. So that's like the top three. I love that you said that because I think that for so many of us who are experts in our field, we think that once we have mastered whatever we needed to do in our field, we're done. And it very much is that mentality of like, okay, I throw my hands up now. If I, I built it, so let's see, right? Um, and we don't necessarily think about building email lists and we don't necessarily think about, you know, online community building or any number of the things that you mentioned. So I appreciate you saying that. Now, you got to know, as you say it, 
all of my nervousness starts to get triggered, right? Um, I start to think then what's the point? <laughs> what's the, why, why would I even want to do this, right? Like what, so talk to me a little bit about what's the benefit of engaging in the knowledge commerce market, right? Like what's, what makes all of those challenges even worthwhile in terms of undertaking? What makes this mountain worth the climb is all of the freedom on the upside. At the end of the day, you want to get to a point if you want to be successful in your industry where you're not trading your time for money. Mm. And the knowledge commerce space is significantly beneficial for you to be more flexible around how you generate revenue. You don't have to be there and talk to each person in order to disseminate your knowledge to someone. If you have an online course or an app or whatever the case may be, it lives beyond the moment that you're sitting there and you can monetize it beyond the moment that you're sitting there creating the content. So being able to generate passive income through your work and memorializing your expertise in a way that you can generate passive income and not trade your time for money is, I think, an immense benefit of being in knowledge commerce. Also, in general, when you talk about knowledge commerce, for the most part, I think there's some areas of knowledge commerce that are more expensive than others to generate, but relatively it's lower overhead cost. Like if I'm creating an actual tangible product, let's say it's even a planner. Um, I've got to fit the bill for the cost of the paper, the designer to design the planner a certain way, you know, go to overseas, pick pack and assembling. That stuff costs a lot of money. When you're talking about distributing an online course, the overhead costs are significantly lower than manufacturing a physical product and also significantly lower than even face-to-face one-on-one coaching, particularly if you have like a rented space that you have to pay for, things like that. The overhead cost can be significantly lower. You just need a computer, an iPhone camera for the most part, and your brain. And I know that there's, you know, value in time and money, but actual cost that you put on your profit and loss sheet is relatively low. I would also say from the tangible to the intangible, the impact, the impact that you get from sharing your expertise and someone saying that their life has changed and I didn't realize that I could do this, but because of what you showed me or what you taught me in your online course or on your podcast or whatever the case may be, now I can do this. Now I can start you know, my own business in this area, or now I can fulfill this area of my life. So the impact that it has on other people, if that is motivational or inspiring to you, that you impact people in a positive way, then I think you can't get too many areas where it's more rewarding for you to operate than delivering knowledge commerce. And the flexibility, like I said before, really you can pivot. You can pivot and spin off components of your expertise into a bunch of areas, dig deeper into that area, and then come back to the core area and then go someplace else. You have the opportunity to really be flexible and scale your business in a way that is not really available for a lot of other industries and markets. So there's a lot of upside to the knowledge commerce market that if you don't want to continue to trade your time for money and you want to generate passive income and kind of be a little bit more settled, but reach a lot more people at any given time, I think knowledge commerce is the perfect way to do that.